वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू एवरी वन ऑन बॉलीवुड लाइफ आई एम होस्ट असल डिस्लवा और आज हमारे साथ मौजूद है हिंदुस्तानी सिनेमा के ऐसे बड़े निर्देशक जिनके बारे में मैं यकीन के साथ कह सकता हूँ कि जब जब भी भी इंडियन सिनेमा के इतिहास को लिखा जाएगा कोई भी युग में तो इनका नाम सुनहरे अक्षरों में एकदम ऊंचे स्थान पे होगा आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट राम गोपाल वर्मा हु हैज गिवेन इंडियन सिनेमा सम ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट फिल्म वी कुड एवर एवर इमेजिन you round the welcome to you sir it's an honor talking to you and thanks for making me feel so old that is not my intention <laughs> that is not my intention it's a more than old i would say it's a legendary it's no, i was legendary. i was just i was just joking yeah, yeah. yes yeah. sir uh sir after uh, a long time uh, it's actually it feels a long time now considering the huge gap that has happened in cinema halls but it is good to see that yeah. newer is beginning with a ram gopal verma film and you're coming back with a horror film horror is your forte so the trailer look very interesting it has an ensemble cast tell us the relevance of the word 12 o'clock to your horror movie and also what it is about what is different how does it from your other horror films that the audience can expect the part one the the relevance of the title to be frank is not much but i always thought uh, Twelve o'clock, uh, even from the time whenever you heard as a kid, it uh, it always had a uh, kind of a synonymous aspect to horror. Rat bara baje, you know, you hear the ghanti in the midnight uh, stri- striking of the clock, and that adhi rat as a word, I think, is uh, very synonymous with horror. To that context, I think uh, I just wanted to keep it like a brand, and I want to make a series of films. So this film is actually called Andar ka Bhut, you know. and uh, 12 o'clock is just like a like a brand now what is unique about this film my in city like you know when uh, if, if uh, maybe a year back or something a person told me um, ram you keep saying that you don't believe in supernatural and all that but the point is you didn't experience it so how can you speak for people who might have experienced something uh, which is beyond rational understanding so i thought that was an interesting point So I thought to create a situation where the scientific community and the police department are faced with a strange case, where they have no choice but to believe that there is something supernatural going on in it. You know. So, uh, but now you would have never heard a policeman saying that, um, like, we think there is a ghost in this case, involved in this case. Even if they feel that they can't say it, because even the believers will laugh at that. That's something uh, like that insinuating it, no? And that's what I think is unique. And second, the way it is made, it it is just put in the nobody is alone in the film. You, usually, horror films have a tendency to put a character suddenly alone in a room or a hall or a house. Yeah. Here, everyone is together all the time. But yet, the scare is there. because um, what you're experiencing yourself you can't really share it with anyone or you can't share it with people who probably could get you out of the trouble namely the police and the uh, medical community so the fear becomes even more intense so that that's the point a very interesting point you made that uh, somebody told you that unless and until you believe in the supernatural then yeah uh, so that is very interesting because you have made some of the finest horror movies dating back to rat and then bhu hmm. and funk so did you, despite making these other movies you still did not believe in the supernatural sir uh, no for the same reason if i'm making a gangster film that doesn't mean i believe uh, in gangsters you know no, but See, as a film uh, my 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 point is to tell an entertaining story and if suppose uh, my characters are such that uh, i'm creating a situation with a story that someone believes in something or someone goes ahead and does something i am just telling the story of that person as a filmmaker that doesn't ref- necessarily reflect my personal views on the same subject matter okay. uh twelve o'clock has an ensemble cast uh, legend and uh, legendary actor like mithun chakravarty uh some very fine actors like ashish vidyarthi makhlan deshpande a nice supporting cast flora saini is there uh so when you getting them all these together while writing this uh, while uh, getting the mm. project in your mind did you have the actors in mind while casting them not necessarily all of them is i think casting happens for a period of time it's not like one fine day you sit in the office and decide on who's going to play with whom as the script is developing you suddenly think of someone and uh, like oh, it's yeah 
Uh, Flora Saini is a very interesting choice. Uh, she has done some web series and uh, uh, she's usually associ associated with uh, bold material on the web series. How well casting her, how did you sir, envisage her in this part? Because this is completely different to her image. How did that vision come about? I think it breaks the pattern. In fact, I was just telling her yesterday in some kind of a uh, every live which you've done with each other, I said, I think this must be the first film where only your close-ups are there. You know, <laughs> in the entire film, yes. there's only some tight close-ups of Flora. Probably it's not even a bit short uh, that I can remember. Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, you had a career which has spanned, we could call yourself, call yourself a fan India director. Uh, you have not been restricted to a particular, particular industry. While uh, beginning your career, sir, there has been some great films, Shiva, Drohi, then there were some lovely South films, AM, before, this was before Rangila and Satya came, sir. What would you say would be the movie that really yeah. put you on the map there as a director where your contemporaries and other people also took you really seriously? I mean, Pan India voice, I think it's definitely Rangila. I mean, though Shiva had given me quite a, I mean, uh, popularity, uh, but uh, more in the film industry, I think uh, in the audience mind, I think first time they heard my name, everyone, uh, I think it's Rangila and uh, Satya probably kind of, uh, uh, I mean, um, followed that in, in the same way. Cemented that. So would there be some movies in your career, would you say that uh, probably they are having come at a certain time and sequels were not the norm at that yeah. time? Like how they are now, probably they missed the opportunity of making sequels. They like probably if you say Rath, it was tailor made for a sequel. Then there was a South movie of yours with uh, Sri Devi and Venkatesh, Shanam Shanam. That yeah. was so, would you yeah. say that uh, probably if they missed a boat of sequels because of the time they released? I mean, a sequel, primarily, if you look at it, if someone liked the food uh, you put and you want a second helping, which is what from the audience's perspective. And from a filmmaker's perspective, since already one film has made the subject or the title popular, so the hope is that uh, at least they will come apart from somebody else. You know, I think it makes uh, business sense and uh, the fact that the first was liked is, is the point. Mm. But as a remake, I think it's much more to do with you're aiming for a completely younger generation. You probably haven't seen the original. Yes. Many times the remakes are parried a lot because once seen by the original guys and in comparison they very rarely like a remake mm -hmm. you know because they like the original so much that they feel that uh, it's been um, spoiled or something yeah so speaking about remakes I must ask you this because and this is the first time I'm speaking to you in fact Bollywood life I don't think so I've spoken to you in, in ages uh, is this the reason would you say Ram Gopal Verma ki aag was derided a lot because the people just couldn't get surely out of their mind or looking back, do you think that probably... Uh, I, I definitely yeah, I definitely think it's one factor, maybe not the only factor. I mean, uh, the factor, I think, is when they see some iconic people like Garminder and Amitabh Bachchan and uh, at the time, you know, those kind of roles, to suddenly see some newcomers, uh, whether they're good or bad, I think it would be very difficult to assimilate, but especially considering the popularity of Shule. Uh, which never dies, you know, incidentally. Okay. I would think there's one factor, important factor, but maybe that's not the only factor. Because I think the film also, I became uh, till too indulgent and I became, like, it had a lot of lag in it. And I think uh, it just was all over the place. You know? So I, I would say uh, that is just one factor. That's very Lastly, big. it's to do with me, I mean, my indulgence. That's very big of yeah. you to uh, say that. I remember when I was growing up, uh, at that time, I, when I was still studying, when the movie came out, and I read one of your interviews, sir, and you had told that you would keep trying to make uh, Shole till it is accepted. Uh, in the try, keep trying to remake yeah. it till it is accepted. Have you given up that quest, sir? See, when I tried to remake Shole, it became hard. So I thought if I tried to remake hard, it might become Shole. Brilliant people. So I will just get on to the next question, sir. Twelve o'clock. You intend to make it as a, like you said, you intend to make it as a franchise. Uh, yeah. Are the ideas of the subsequent parts already swirling in your head? Are you yes, yes. Or are you, okay? Yeah, already a couple of them are uh, already written down. Okay. 
so we could expect them pretty soon because there's one thing about your filmography so you don't waste time from movie to movie i noticed that so we could yeah. expect them soon yes i mean i can't be committing the time period but it will be within a few months yeah true and uh, uh, before we trail off sir uh, the final thing is uh, two things actually uh, a uh, sir there was uh, a time uh, i think so it was still run and uh, rakta charitra where uh, it, it was probably uh, you used to get all the biggest of stars to work in your movie from amita bachan to ajay devgan all these things is it a conscious effort that now sir you are working with actors who are not probably stars or it's is just a conscious effort that in your latter phase of your career it's not uh, always have the match mix uh, mix match of actors my first film shiva yeah. uh, for a huge audience it was a like debut of a actor from south which mm-hmm. was practically it was new people mm-hmm. and then uh, like raat again it was new people Oh. You know, in fact, I've always had a tendency to work with uh, new actors and not uh, technically stars most of my career. Uh, so getting a star now for your film again, is it at, as easy as it used to be or are there more challenges now in the newer age? See, see I make the kind of genre films. I make films which are like very realistic and uh, which are niche. Mm-hmm. And uh, so big stars should be actually liable. It's not a question. I never approach them you know, because... they will look fake in in for example in a movie like chalo clock for example you have, you have make it look star it look very fake you know so i think uh, if when i did satya and you know, imagine if satya had very recognized faces i don't think the film will remain the same true, true. so the kind of film subjects which i select which i choose they call for actors with fresh faces most of the time yeah and so this is a personal question i had read some way that uh, there was a movie with uh, nagarjun if i'm not mistaken i cannot remember the title of the movie where you wanted to cast uh, uh, sri devi but the thing is uh, you are a huge sri devi fan we know that uh, but uh, because of her inability you had cast uh, urmila matonkar and from day your relationship with urmila matonkar grew your professional relation is is this true yes that's that's not true that's not true okay Okay, because no. you know how yeah. intermediate things circulate. Anyway, sir, uh, yeah. it was it was brilliant talking to you, and I do wish I get yeah. the the in twelve o'clock the same old Ram Kapal Verma which I've grown up with. So brilliant talking. Okay, to you. thanks.